Thank you, Damiel. Thank you, Ediga, for the invitation to give a talk on this session. I'm very happy to be here. I would be happier if we were all together in Rio, but uh, next time, in two years, I hope we'll get together there. So today I'm going to talk on the solutions of the unknown equation. And my talk will be based on three works. One with Filomena Pacella from the Università di Roma Sapienza, and the two others with Wendell H. Da Silva that uh, got the PhD degree in our department last year. And uh, so this is the outline of my talk. I'm going to start with the equation, small motivation and also positive solutions. And then I will shift to nodal solutions. Then I'm going to talk about the Morse index of special solutions in the case of, in the particular case of the dimension n equals two. And then I will finish with the case for dimension n greater or equals to three. And I mean, I'm going to discuss about the asymptote profile of radial solutions. And I would say that although simple, uh, the last part is the, that I like most. Okay, and uh, so this is the unknown equation. So we have minus Laplacian of u equals to this term here on the right hand side in the Bn and u equals zero on the boundary of Bn where Bn stands for the unit open ball centered at the origin of Rn. And here I consider n greater or equals to two. Alpha here in the weight is a positive parameter and P is bigger than two. Uh, this equation appeared uh, the first time, uh, it was introduced by Enon. It's named after his paper of 1973. And it was proposed to model some phenomena involving clustering of clusters of stars, where in the center of the clusters, we have a black hole. And I, since we are, I, I'm short on time, I'm not going to discuss more on the physical motivation, but believe me, so this is linked to this astrophysics phenomena that I mentioned to you. And it turns out that this simple equation is a prototype for many fundamental problems on the qualitative analysis of elliptic PDs, uh, such as symmetry or symmetry breaking of positive solutions, uh, and also the least energy nodal solutions, uh, asymptotic uh, uh, analysis uh, such as concentration phenomena when the parameter alpha here goes to infinity and also when this parameter, the p parameter goes to the criti, classical critical Sobolev exponent in dimension n, n, or n greater or equals to three or in, when p goes to infinity in dimension n equals two. So I, I like very much this equation because in particular, a course in our department is essentially based on this equation, because as I said, many fundamental problems can be addressed investigating this particular equation. Okay, so again here, just to, again, this the unknown equation. And as I mentioned, it was introduced in 1973, but just after the work of Ni from 1981, it became object of extensive mathematical research. The first uh, remark is that the, comparing this Henon equation here with the unweighted equation. Okay, suppose that instead of this weight here, we have one. So we have the classical learn and then equation. So this weight, modifies the consequence of the Pohojaev identity. Indeed, it gives rise to a new critical Sobolev exponent. So this is the 
classical critical sobolev exponent when we include this weight we have a new critical sobolev exponent that depends on the weight and indeed this exponent here this new exponent is the exact threshold for the existence of solutions the Pohojaev identity guarantees that no classical solution exists for, for this equation when p is greater or equals to this exponent here involving alpha. And on the other hand, when p is greater than two and less than this exponent, it includes cases that it's higher, bigger than the classical Sobolev exponent, we can find radial solution. And this was proved in the work of Nii very long time ago, uh, based on a radial lemma. Indeed, Nii proved an uh, embedding of the space H10 of radial functions into this Lebesgue space, weighted Lebesgue space. And here you see the new critical exponent. And then he applied when we are strictly below this exponent here, we have compactness. And he used the classical mountain pass theorem to produce to a positive solution. And uh, OK. And then, uh, as I said, uh, uh, the existence of a positive solution was proved by me. And we know by, by the result of Gida's um, Gida's uh, in Nirenberg uh, on the moving planes that po when we are in the non-weighted uh, case, Positive solutions, we have the Lani and equation, so there is no weight here. Positive solutions are radially symmetric, so using the moving planes. However, uh, the weight here that, that appears in, here in this side increases with the norm of X. So the moving planes techniques, nor neither moving planes techniques nor symmetrization works to prove radial symmetry of positive solutions. Indeed, when P is superlinear, okay, and the pro problem is superlinear, P greater than two and less than the classical critical Sobolev exponent, and alpha is sufficiently large, for uh, the least energy solution, what I called here LES, uh, although positive, are not radially symmetric. And this was proved in 2002 by Ismet Suin Lem in the case n greater equals to two, and later by Bion and Wang for all dimensions n greater equals to one. And um, so although uh, these uh, least energy solutions are not rad necessarily radially symmetric, are not radially symmetric if alpha is large. In, if alpha is cl close to zero, indeed they are radially symmetric. But in any case, there is these special solutions, least energy solutions, have a residual symmetry that is called the Schwarz-foliated symmetry. And this was proved in uh, 2002 by Pacella and his maths in William in 2003. And uh, many people have worked on these equations here, just to mention some, including some Brazilians, uh, Olimpio and Di Jairo have worked on that. And I would mention, ah, also Sergio Neves from, the, uh, here from Sao Paulo. And uh, recently I would, and uh, stress that Amadori and Grad Gladiali have worked a lot on this equation with very important results regarding, especially regarding Morse index. In the case alpha is fixed and P 
tends to the critical exponent or p tends to infinity in dimension n equals two. And this about the symmetry, as I said, least energy solutions may not be radially symmetric. In the case of uh, the um, learn and an equation, or the non-weighted problem, Pacella, Aftalion and Pacella proved in 1993 that least energy solutions are not radially symmetric. And then, uh, as I said, Ismetsu and Lehman beyond one, Kao, Peng, and Yan, they proved symmetry breaking, and also they uh, studied the concentration phenomena for least energy solution, positive solution. And Bach, Pacella, and Bach, Pacella, Ismetsu, uh, Bach, Pacella, Ismetsu and Lehman, they have important contribution regarding the symmetry of these special solutions, least energy solutions, which turns out to be positive, and the least energy nodal solutions. And the Schwartz foliated, both classes of solutions have the Schwartz foliated symmetry. And just to give you the idea which is the Schwartz foliated symmetry. You take, uh, for these solutions, you take the neck a point inside the ball B. Okay, the black uh, part here is the boundary of the ball. So you take a point where the solution attains its maximum value. You can always, since the problem invariant under rotation, I can always uh, consider that this is, uh, this point, uh, the line linking the center and this point is uh, that uh, gives the north pole direction, and so here is the maximum point. So the Schwartz foliated symmetry in dimension n equals two, where you see here in my slide, means that the solution is symmetric, axially symmetric with respect to this axis, the blue axis here. And it's, so if I take two symmetric points, you assume the same value here. And starting from the north pole direction, and so we have here the polar angle. So the solution is decreasing with respect to this polar, non-increasing to be more precise, non-increasing with respect to this polar angle. So this is the Schwartz foliated symmetry. Uh, okay, so about the, the nodal solutions. So this, again, the non-equation. The first question is, since uh, if alpha is zero, we know that least energy nodal solutions are not radially symmetric, uh, can we prove the same thing for uh, in the weighted case, I, the question is motivated. I will explain later. And second, the, the weight uh, interferes on the Morse index of uh, radial solutions, nodal radial solutions. And so this was the motivation, the two main questions that uh, when I started thinking on this problem with Philomena in 2015, and at that time, we know some previous result on this, the symmetry breaking of these least energy nodal solutions. In, the, in a paper from 2005, Bach, Wetwin, and Willem arguing uh, with arguments based on the energy estimates. They said, okay, look, if alpha is large, I know that the least energy nodal solutions cannot be radial because radial solutions have very high energy. And uh, in 2015, with Denis Bonnet, Miguel Ramos, and Hugo Tavares, we proved that the same uh, asymptotic analysis can also be done if alpha is small, because when alpha goes to zero, the least energy node of solution of this problem converge to the least energy nodal solutions of the 
Lenny-Enden problem, which we know that is not radially symmetric. And so we also have symmetry breaking for these special solutions if alpha is small. But for general alpha, the question, I would say, remained open since at least 2005. Then in 2017, with Philomena, we give an uh, answer to this problem, to these problems for the very special case of dimension n equals two. So here, uh, uh, m of u denotes the most index of a solution u. n of u, the number of nodal sets of the solution u. And uh, Barch and Vett in 2003 proved that, that for every alpha greater or equals to zero, the Morse index of least energy nodal solution is equal to two. So it does not depend on alpha and it does not depend on the dimension n. Uh, indeed, uh, the argument are based on previous, this previous papers here. Uh, when alpha, in the particular case of alpha equals zero, I in Pacelli in 2004, proved that radial nodal solutions have very high uh, Morse index. Since we know that the least energy nodal solution have Morse index two, uh, in the autonomous case, non-weighted case, uh, least energy solutions are not radially symmetric. So this is comparing just the Morse index of these special solutions. L indeed, later these results of Aftalion Pacella were improved in this paper in the advances in math by the Marquis, Yanni, and Pacella. So in dimension n equals two, uh, I mentioned that this argument here on these two papers cannot be extended to the uh, non-autonomous case when we have in, for the Henon equation. And let uh, so in this paper with Philomena, we proved that uh, if U is a radial solution of the Henon equation, so the Morse index of U uh, radial nodal, nodal solution, sign changing solution. So the Morse index of U is greater or equals to this N plus N of U plus two, where N of U is the number of nodal sets. So for a nodal solution, it's greater or equals to two. So with this uh, result here, we proved uh, the problem of uh, symmetry breaking for least energy nodal solutions. They are not radially symmetric. And we also proved that the weight interferes on the Morse index, but we could make calculations only in the special case when the alpha here is even. So we, we proved this lower bound. In particular, we proved that radio solution, Morse index of radio solutions are very, very high if the weight, as if the alpha here, the parameter alpha in the weight is very high. So consequently, every least energy nodal solution is not radially symmetric. And the Morse index of any radial solution with a fixed number of uh, nodal sets goes to infinity along the sequence of uh, uh, even uh, uh, way, uh, when the power of the weight is even. OK, I'm going to be a little skip this because uh, I, uh, I am getting out of time. The proof, as I said, the proof of Talion Pacella does not extend to the case of the non-autonomous uh, problem. I'm going to skip this otherwise. Uh, so this is just, if, I'm sorry not to define the, for those that do not know. Uh, OK, very fast here. The Morse index of a solution of this problem is the maximum dimension of a subspace in H10 in which the quadratic form, this quadratic form, which is the second derivative of the function of uh, a solution U, set of evaluating the pair WW is negative definite. So this is the definition of Morse index. We have alternative definitions and uh, Later, what we proved with Wendell in dimension n equals two was the monotonicity of the Morse index with respect to the parameter alpha. And so it was in 2019. 
So take U alpha and array the solution of the unknown problem with the weight alpha. And U beta array the solution of the unknown problem of, with weight beta. Suppose that U alpha and U beta have the same number of node offsets. So if alpha is less or equal than beta, then the Morse index of U alpha is less or equal than the Morse index of U beta. So this is the monotonicity of the Morse index. And the radial Morse index restricted to the, uh, I mean, the quadratic form restricted to the radial function is constant, does not depend on alpha, but only on the number of node offsets. So this is, and the, the, the argument was based on a change, useful change of variables that only works in dimension n equals two. Indeed, we could relate in dimension n equals two the problem with uh, the weight uh, x alpha and x beta. There is a, a, a correspondence between solutions of, uh, of the problem P alpha and P beta in the sense of radial solutions. Okay, from a solution U alpha of the problem P alpha, we produce a solution U, we beat, uh, U, U beta of the problem with the weight X to the power beta. And this is the change of variable. So this is why we could obtain uh, this uh, result here. So very, I would say, simple calculations. And uh, we also proved uh, uh, some lower bounds for the Morse indices. With Philomena, we got this for every solutions. We proved this with, uh, uh, the, when alpha is even. And these, our results were improved by Amadori and Gladiali in 2020. And we've went that we could improve a little bit uh, more this uh, estimate here. Uh, yeah, I, okay, so this is, and just to finish, uh, I would uh, move now to the case n greater x to three. And uh, in this case, I would start with uh, the, uh, the motivation for our results based on the case n equals two. We know that uh, uh, using that change of variable, we could link a, a radial solution of the unknown equation with the weight alpha. With a radial solution with the same number of uh, nodal sets of the problem or non-weighted problem, the learning and an equation. So this works fine in dimension equal n plus two. And so we can, uh, prove many results just <laughs> using this simple change of variable. So we got a synthetic profile of this solution U alpha, just analyzing uh, using this change of variable. Okay, in particular, the radial solutions, you see that the radii where the radial, so uh, radial solution of the problem uh, a known, a known problem vanish, they all goes to the boundary as alpha goes to infinity. And which was the, so we, we, we see, what we see here in dimension n equals two, we have a change of variable that said, look, all the solution of the known problem are indeed based on radial solution of the learning ending problem. In dimension n equals greater or equals to three, what we managed to prove that, and that I like very much is that, so consider the unknown equation dimension n greater equals to three in the two dimensional, the learning and an equation, you see here, there is no weight in dimension two, make the change of variable inspired, uh, the same change of variable from dimension two. So what we proved this, uh, function here, V alpha, uh, it does not, uh, I mean, we do not have a, a solution in the, it's not a solution of a La, uh, second order equation involved the Laplacian operating dimension N, okay? But uh, we could prove that this solution converges in this space here, okay, as alpha goes to infinity, to W, where W is the solution of the learning and problem with the same number of nodal sets 
of the solution U alpha. Okay, and so we could link so the unknown problem in any dimension with the Lanyard and problem with the same power P in dimension two. And just to give a flavor to finish my talk, uh, and to say how, how this may be true, using this change of variable here, if you calculate uh, would the, uh, the formula for using the Laplace and the formula, the, the equation that U satisfies, we got that V alpha satisfies this equation here. And this is, if M alpha, this number, which not an inter, necessarily an integer, is precisely the radial would be, the, if M alpha was an integer, this would be the radial Laplacian. And look, as alpha goes to infinity, this number tends to two, converts to two. So this means that this is approach the two-dimensional radial Laplacian. And you see here, there is no weight. So I think I'm out of time and I thank you very much for the attention. And uh, okay, thank you, obrigado to all of you.